Well, hello, everyone, and good day. Well, we are on already episode number three of our Stuart Project. In the last episode, of course, we really concentrated on the painting. This episode will be a little bit of a housekeeping episode where we're going to take care of a few details on the Stuart, and then we're going to move on to some figure painting. And the last half of this video will be concentrated on the figures. And so we'll spend a little bit of time there and do it a little bit more of a long form format. If you recall from the very first episode, I opened up the box and discovered the what's affectionately called the rubber band tracks. And honestly, I have not used these for years and years and years. And so long ago that you used to have to melt the little tabs to get them to connect. Well, now apparently you can glue them. And matter of fact, these are actually quite nice. So I glued them together, gave them a coat of primer. This is Mr. Surfacer 1200. And let's just see how these work out. Well, the first thing I do is give the tracks an overall dark gray color to simulate the rubber pads. And then along the edges, where all the little links, the cleats come together, just give it a little, I don't know, what we'll call this little dusty, dirty, metallic sort of feel. And speaking of metallic, just a little light brush with a metallic paint just to kind of bring out some of those highlights a little bit. A little bit of wear, tear here and there, just a little polish along some of those edges. Just a quick stripe of color here, and this is just a first step of just trying to make these links just to look a little bit more individual, get a little bit of a dirt appearance in between those and highlight each individual link. And so now let's go ahead and install these. Just a quick test fit here around the drive wheel. And of course these fit just like a glove. Let's see if we can get these on. And yep, trying to do this on camera is a little bit fiddly. So let's do a quick jump break and oh, here we go. Oh, all finished. That wasn't so bad, was it? <laughs> like I said, a little hard to do on camera, so we had to take a time out right there because I needed to kind of fiddle around with them a little bit to get them to fit. Well, we have the tracks on, the weathering's basically in place, but there's still a few items that we need to take care of, just a few finishing touches here. For instance, the field mount 30 caliber tripod here, let's just kind of add a few a little polish marks there, a little metallic sheen to some of those. This is a mechanical pencil just with a number two lead in it. It can be very precise and just kind of basically drawing on some of the edges and then just rub it back for a little bit of a buffing sheen. Same with the tools, just add a little bit of metallic sheen on some of those. And then there we have it. Here's where we are at the moment. Our steward is basically done in terms of the weathering. The tracks are on. Well, now we need to take care of, well, the stowage. The stowage we worked on in a prior episode. The boxes are basically from Value Gear, and then I've, of course, made a few tarps and blankets using Magic Sculpt and added those to the mix. Glued everything together into these nice packages, and now I've painted them a dark color just to make sure all those shadow areas are all covered up. Gave it a nice dry brush with a light color, similar to how I work on my figures. And now it's just a matter of adding the color back into them. No bright colored air identification tarps, no captured quilts or anything like that. This is all basically olive drab and brown colors. And then once those are painted up, just a little bit of PVA glue on the bottom side. And then we could just kind of tuck those into place. And there we go. Nice. Allow the glue to dry for just a few moments and then we'll put it on our spinning platform here and there we go there's our Stuart all decked out with its stowage which I think gives it a lot of nice personality well speaking of personalities <laughs> yep we've got some figures to paint so the next part of this episode is all about figure painting we'll make it a little bit more of a long form video here maybe put some music behind let's get started the figures that I've chosen for this scene are from Panzer Art and the quality of the castings are just unbelievable. Just a little bit of cleanup here. Just remove them from their sprues. There we go. Oops, <laughs> I was holding onto the wrong piece. Oh, well. And let's try a little test fit here. Let's see how this works just right off the bat. Uh, nice locating pins in there. There's a nice square block, but there's a little bit of flash in there. I need to take care of that. It's not a big deal. Cleanup on the resin is a quick and easy process. Just a little bit of a cut with this blade just kind of whittle that back just slightly and then we're ready to try it one more time and here we go yeah that's there we go yep there we go yep F fits perfectly and 
Wow, what a great fit. I've really simplified my painting process now, and this is starting to work for me. First step is just to give a base color, and I do this from the brush, not even using the airbrush, just of burnt umber. A couple of light coats, just making sure that the coverage is full and that the surface is nice and smooth. Then once that's set up and dry, then I just come back with a light color, and this happens to be ivory, and just do a very light dry brushing and a downstroke. So this is creating the highlights and the shadows in that zenithal light pattern. And again, no airbrush. It goes very, very quick. It's very, very simple. And for me, this process is starting to work out very, very nicely. And then once I have the lights and the shadows all established between the base coat and the dry brush, then I can start adding the colors, whether that be to the face or to the uniform. I think that rather than trying to narrate every stroke and every color that I'm using right now, what I'll do is just allow the video to play. I'll come back from time to time and make a few comments and I'll put some music in the background so we'll just watch these, these figures come to life. The very darkest shadows that you see, say around the eyes and such, well that's all just from that very first base color of the burnt umber. Been very careful to preserve the deepest shadows. And with a hat tip to other figure painters on YouTube who have shown me a lot of tips and tricks, I just start bringing up all those highlights just in successive lighter tones on smaller and smaller areas where the highlights might be, like on the bridge of the nose, on the forehead, top of the chin, places like that. Allow me a brief moment to say thank you to my Patreon. If you like this channel and like to support it further, if you'd like a little more content, well then Patreon is the place for you. Early viewing of these videos, special tutorial videos, photos of ongoing projects, a Discord server. It's a great place to hang out and get a little more information. I please invite you to come check it out. The link is in the description below. Thanks. We'll finish up the final details on the face and let's move over to the helmet. This is wearing a camouflage cover over his helmet. So, I've, and I want this to look kind of faded. So it's gonna be a light olive as the base color. Then I add the individual camouflage colors directly from the bottle. And then I come back with those same colors diluted with deck tan, just to tap in and fade those out so it looks sun faded. Next on, we'll move on to the figure or his body. Same idea, he's been base coated with the burnt umber and then just dry brushing with the light color, the ivory color. And of course this guy's got his shirt opened up, so first thing I wanna work on here is the interior sides, which means the flesh colors for his chest and abdomen area. Continuing to refine those shadows and highlights, very much the same process as was done with his face. Moving on to his uniform, I've laid out a palette with some greens and gray colors. These will be my colors to use for his clothing. First layer is a very thin layer here, allowing both that burnt umber pre-shading to show through the shadow colors and also those highlights, they also show through as well. This gives me that roadmap which with to follow to add further highlights and refinements later on.
Well, this guy's looking pretty good now, so I think let's put him together. So we've got the head that we did earlier. He slides right in there. I've got a drop of CA glue in there. Kind of hold that in place, tap it down, and there we go. Our first figure is complete. Well, since we're having so much fun painting figures, and yeah, I am actually having a lot of fun painting these figures, let's move on to the second figure. This will be the commander for the Stuart, so he'll be riding in the turret of the Stuart. I've gone back and forth on this scene. I've, like, I don't know, I've, I've toyed with three figures or four figures, but I think I'm going to limit it to two figures. So the first Marine that we showed a little bit earlier that's got his hand out, he's going to be leaning up against a tree trunk. And then, of course, our commander here who will be piloting the Stuart tank. Same process as before, of course. We started with the burnt umber shadows, the, the base layer, dry brush with a light ivory color overall, and then just start adding color. Should also mention that his goggles, I'm working on them right now, not quite at that point, but the lenses, I added a dark gray into the interior area, and then once that dried, just a couple of drops of gloss varnish gives it a really nice glossy lens goggle type of, of appearance. Just a few final steps here. Just kind of focusing in on his helmet and the goggles. Just bringing out some of those highlights and fixing some of those edges. And then moving on to the commander's torso, we've got these nice arms sticking out from his t-shirt. And those have been finished in the same colors as has been done with the faces. Just establishing a few highlights and shadows on his t-shirt. Just make a few final adjustments here on his shirt and his arms to bring everything together. But here we have our final photographs of both of these figures. So here's our commander. He's looking nice. There we go. And then we have our marine who's been going to be leaning up against the tree. And he looks like he's been through something. Of course, this episode wasn't just about the figures, it was also about the Stuart. And here's a few final photographs of the Stuart, all loaded down with its stowage. You can see the weathering that we've done in the previous episodes and the fine tuning we did in this episode. And here's our commander sitting in the turret. He looks pretty, pretty comfortable up there. As I start to wrap up this episode, I do remind you to please hit that like and subscribe if you like the content of this channel. If you would like a little bit more content and like to support this channel further, I do have a Patreon page and the description is in the link below. In the next episodes, well, we'll start working on the base. I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> Here we go. Here's a work in progress. This is how bases get started in my world. Pretty rough. We'll see how this works out. So until the next time, guys, take care and, of course, happy modeling.